All right, people, so here's female anatomy. So I'm just going to jump right into it because there's a lot to cover, um, and I want to be as efficient as possible. So overall, like the functions, um, the, what does the female reproductive system do or what can it do? Um, produce sex hormones, um, and then uh, for after fertilization occurs with sperm and egg, provide a protective and supporting environment for the impro embryo and fetus and whatnot as it's developing, you know, if that's a choice you end up making. Um, we'll talk about like for infertility issues a little bit later, um, and actually at the end of this we'll look at some IVF as well. Um, so you've got external, internal uh, genitalia, um, so we'll, we'll kind of start on the outside and work our way in, but let's start off with uh, mammary glands. Um, uh, for females, the gametes are eggs, obviously, and here's our fancy wor word for it, oocytes, which is uh, homologous to spermatocyte for uh, the male reproductive system. So starting with uh, the breasts, the mammary glands, so inside you've got uh, what are called uh, uh, lactiferous ducts, which will um, basically fuse into sinuses, and the sinuses all come uh, and exude out of the uh, nipple. So that's the whole point of the female nipple. This process is called lactation, and so that's that root word, lactiferous everywhere, of producing milk. Um, but don't forget, there's also the antibodies within the milk as well. Um, I show my uh, anatomy kids a video on why men still have nipples, even though they're pretty much useless. And I'll put a little note in there for you guys if you want to watch that video, if not. Uh, areola would just be the surrounding region. Um, it's kind of like um, discoloration comes from like all the sebaceous glands, which are oil-producing glands um, that are just r like right underneath the surface there. So just kind of the whole area to keep it uh, keep it from uh, drying out because um, it's a pretty sensitive area and we'll look at like erogenous zones and stuff like that later too. All right, so sticking with the outside uh, area, so kind of the difference, big difference between like the vulva and the vagina. So vulva, vulva is your outside area. Here's a new word for you. You might not know pudendum, uh, which is fun. Uh, vestibule would be kind of like the vestibule of a house, uh, like a building right to house, that kind of entryway. Um, what we have here with the vulva, the vulva contains the uh, labia majorum and the labia minorum, which are basically, labia refers to kind of like lips, so like the outside kind of flaps right here, um, so major and minor. Um, so we, we consider the vulva the external part of the genitalia here. Um, we'll look at mons pubi uh, pubis, and we'll look at prepuce, which might remind you that term of foreskin, and then the clitoris or clitoris as well. Uh, I guess depending on if you're British or not, how you want to pronounce that. Um, so sticking outside, we used to have some glands again. So um, vestibular glands, those greater and less, lesser ones, um, usually use the term bartholins. What these glands do, um, like first and foremost, like this is an exposed area to the environment, right? So you, you want to make it sure it's protected against like incoming bacteria and things like that. So that's kind of the big reason for mucus. Um, so not only like, you know, you want to make it like a harmful place to, for sperm. So like you don't just have any sperm getting through, but also like all the other bacteria and fungus or whatever that might be uh, um, uh, trying to enter uh, this kind of like warm, more environment, right? Um, so that's what these glands are doing. Uh, Bartholins is homologous to that bulbo urethra gland in males. Uh, so if you remember that one. That was uh, also for lubrication in men, so it's kind of, you know, homologous, same idea, same function there. Um, vestibular bulbs, um, erectile tissue, so there you go. Um, not only do men have erectile tissue, women have it as well. Um, and then um, it's kind of homologous to the corpus spongiosum, which would be erectile tissue in the male penis. Uh, mons pubis, so the pubic mound is the other more common way of saying it. Um, so fat tissue right there, adipose tissue. Um, what's going on right here, if you would like kind of zoom in with x-ray you've got the pelvic bone but you've got that connective tissue where it's you know it's not one entire bone so it can like give there's some give to this um, so that's most important during like actual childbirth um, so that that would be covering uh, the, the pelvic bone right there all right, so here's the clitoris. Uh, here's like kind of the hood area, uh, or prepuce, if you uh, remember from that word from foreskin I mentioned before. Um, so this is uh, the main kind of erogenous zone um, for women. Uh, if we look back in, though, it's not just this bulb, what people don't realize is it actually extends, it goes internal as well. So the clitoris is actually going all throughout the vagina here. So this is like a 3D imaging of it. Um, so it obviously associated with female orgasm. Now that always gets me the question, all right, so there's the clitoris right um, erectile tissue female orgasm but what about the g-spots so what that's a name for that's uh, Grafenberg there should be it's like um, lots right here um, this is still kind of like a not well understood area um, it's it's 
kind of the the origins of it or even if it necessarily exists as its own separate thing is still under uh you know debate is it just really part of the uh, clitoris is it kind of its own uh, unique kind of a uh, cluster of nerves right here is it like is its origin similar to the male prostate um there is erectile tissue there um and so it would be kind of anterior here so you've got the vaginal cavity or canal it would be kind of that interior area uh everybody's different some people you know obviously claim that it is very much a thing other people you know might feel hear this and feel like well I've, I've never experienced that or i can't experience that or i've tried and it's like not there and that's that very well can be true too so it's it's not something um you know that is that is well understood right now but a lot of this early research done on uh the female reproductive system was done by like men right old men so maybe you know more more insight into this is, is required um what is associated with it though is the female ejaculation which uh, could cause um some fluids to come out which is entirely normal so this is all normal everyone's different you know even as Penises come in all different shapes and sizes, so does the female genitalia as well. So there you go. Don't uh, feel like it has to be working one way or another, right? You gotta gotta figure yourself out. So so here's the uh, sagittal section for us. Um, so just a quick rundown, just to kind of put everything in order for you. So let's start again from the outside again. So the labia, uh, major and minor. Uh, here's the cl uh, clitoris, and you can see it extending in. There's that pubic symphys symphysis I mentioned before. So that's what's kind of connecting the pelvic bone together. Um, right here, this would be the urinary bladder. So this is the urinary tract, but notice on this one here is uh, from the vagina, uh, the vaginal canal, and this was what would lead to the uterus. So this would be the reproductive tract. Notice in men, right, they, they connected early on around the prostate. Females don't have the prostate. Again, we mentioned maybe the G-spot might be homologous to the prostate. Here's those accessory glands um, as far as um, the Bartholin's glands and the, the, the greater and lesser uh, vestibular glands um, for mucus production and um, lubrication. Uh, and then obviously here's the rectum rites. Um, what's interesting to most animals, all three of these are like interconnected. We call it in a cloaca. So like birds and like uh, reptiles have this. Uh, females have them separated here. Males, they come together pretty early on and that would be the urethra. Uh, notice how muscular the uterus is, right? Um, so that's that's going to be helpful in childbirth. Uh, and then here is one of the uterine tubes, or you might know it as a fallopian tube. We've got these little fimbrae right here uh, surrounding each ovary. So we're only seeing one side of it, right? There'd be a whole other thing on the other side because this is a sagittal section, uh, dissection. All right, let's move in from external to internal. So let's actually talk about the vagina, right? Um, so here's Captain Obvious comes back again. What it's uh, What's the function of the vagina. So it is a passageway for menstrual fluids. It's a passageway for uh, the penis for sexual intercourse, for a sperm uh, deposition. Uh, and then it would be part of the birth canal as the baby's popping out. So here's what it looks like. It's a muscular tube um, at the end of it. So here's that vestibule, right? The kind of entryway um, could uh, be uh, partially closed by a hymen. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. It's got those folds, if you remember this term from the stomach, right? Some folds in it because it can distend, especially in childbirth. It's going to get pretty big. Uh, and then here is the entryway to the uterus. So that's what the cervix is. Uh, and then there's some fancy names. There's like a cervical canal that you can't see quite yet. So the start of it is called the os. Um, so there you go. That's the vagina, right? Um, it is a pretty low pH area. Um, you you want to, you know, stop foreign stuff from getting inside. Um, but it can happen, and that's why, like, yeast, yeast infections and stuff like that can occur. Um, so here's the hymen, what I, I mentioned before. Usually, um, it, it's, um, especially uh, in modern day, right, um, it, it's usually been torn already and it's absent through intercourse, tampon use, heavy exercise, right? Um, you know, it, it was really only a thing back in, like, the, the historic times when girls basically couldn't act like real people and had to, like, be very, like, closed off and indoors and weren't really doing any of the things a normal human being should be doing. So um, that, that would be the hymen. Um, what was its evolutionary purpose? Uh, who knows? Like the elephant's hymen doesn't actually break until uh, the first time it gives birth. So there's an elephant given birth. Um, for humans, uh, we, we think maybe it's maybe similar to uh, foreskin and that it helped to stop bacteria getting in. Um, but yeah, we, we just don't really know. 
So moving beyond the vagina, we're going to get into, okay, maybe the actual more reproductive part of the reproductive system where like the eggs come in and then where in the uterus, the womb, uh, a child would develop. Um, so here's the cervix, right? Here's the end of the vagina. Um, cervix would be the opening to the uterus. Um, if sperm was coming in, it would come, they'd come up one of the fallopian tubes. And then during ovulation, an egg gets released from an ovary. Um, one at a time. So one would come out one month and the next month it would flip flop and another one come out the other month. Although sometimes two can come out on one side, one can come off on both sides and that's a possible way to get twins. We'll talk about twins and stuff a little bit later. Uh, so here's the ovaries. There's a lot of like ligaments and stuff to keep everything in place. It always reminds me of when I'm looking at it like a Texas longhorn. I can never get that image out of my head. But there you go. We've got these little fimbrae right here. So the egg's going to pop off and move into these. So it's not actually, they're not direct touching them there is a space right here this is actually it's actually closer than it looks like like right over here but they're, they're not actually physically connected so there's like a little space in between them egg travels down this is where fertilization usually occurs and then if the egg does get fertilized it'll implant into the uterine wall right here and so uh, if it doesn't implant then that whole uterine lining will shed so we'll talk about menses or menstruation uh, and then obviously uh, depart through the vaginal canal all right, so let's zoom in on the ovary. So if we look at an ovary right here, um, so these oocytes, um, those are going to be the gametes. They develop. Um, what the ovaries also do is um, they will excrete estrogen and progesterone. So these are going to be very important hormones. We'll talk about why in a second. Uh, and they also secrete inhibin, which inhibits FSH. FSH stands for follicular stimulating uh, hormones. And so uh, in the ovary right here, this is where it gets a little funky. There's millions of what are called these follicles, and they go through like primary, secondary, tertiary. We're not going to get all into that. But basically, they're what create the eggs. And so there's like millions of them, um, especially by the time you're born. But by the time puberty hits, there's only about 400,000 or so follicles left. And then you lose a lot like, you know, every year. Um, and so once you eventually start losing enough follicles, then we would say menopause happens and you stop uh, menstruation. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. So a heads up there. Um, uterine tubes, you already mentioned, this is uh, the uterine tubes or fallopian tubes. Um, they have these little cilia, which was going to help move stuff along. So get the egg out of there um, and we'll connect it to the uterus right here. Boom. So you've seen that. Uh, infundibulum uh, is the kind of expanded portion right here. And these are the little fimbrae extensions that are going to like grab up the egg. Uh, once ovulation occurs and you've got an oocyte that's ready to depart, it's getting mature enough and to move on into uh, the uterine tube right here. Uh, some terms you might remember, ampulla. So we have ampulla in regards to the male uh reproductive duct, if you remember the vas deferens. Um, so there's a lot of homologies. We're, we're maybe not that different in terms of sexes as we, we pretend to believe. Okay, oh, here are those osses I mentioned before. So there's a little cervical canal. So the vaginal canal, this is the cervical canal, and then this is the whole, whole uterus right there. And we'll go over these layers in a little bit. Um, but this middle one right here, myometrium, so you should remember muscle. Endometrium we'll talk about with menses, so the inside parametrium would be the outside layer of the uterus. Um, so, all right, movements. So it takes about a three to four days for the um, advanced uh, part of the egg cell to actually make it uh, through the infundibulum to the uterus. So that is a lot of time to meet up with the sperm. Um, this would be a cross section of it. And there's the cilia I mentioned before. Uh, and so within a couple of days, um, that's when, you know, you're, you're most likely to fertilize the egg. So if you're trying to have a child, that's why people will kind of calculate out what day, what time of day, what hours. Uh, they'll, they'll read mucus layers, they'll read temp body temperatures to figure out, all right, if I'm trying to have a kid, what's the best day to do it? And then obviously we'll talk about the rhythm method. Um, if you're not trying to have a kid, you can calculate the days. All right, when is it most likely you would not fertilize an egg? All right, so uh, uterus, I've already mentioned this uh, uh, mostly, so I'm not going to talk too much about it, but that's where obviously the embryo and fetus is going to hang out. It would come down and a fertilized egg would embed into the wall, the endometrium right here. Um, it's got terms, fundus body, that might remind you of how we label the stomach, um, but the cervix is the main one down here. Um, we'll talk about this one with birth control and IUDs and uh, things like that with the cervix. Um, but here's kind of your, your big info on the layers of the uterus, which you can read over, uh, and then I'll start here for my next video.